Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Leak List time again. This time it's for the next Battle Pass. So we're going to be having a look at the three vehicles that are supposedly coming in the next setup of it. Remember, the Battle Pass is over in about a week, so make sure to get your prizes before it ends and uh, the next one will be coming. If these vehicles come to the game, it would be kind of nice, but also at the same time, I feel some of them would be better as Tech Tree vehicles instead of Battle Pass ones. The first vehicle is a surprising one, and it is the Chinese version of the P-51C-11NT. Now, we already have the P-51C-11NT in the game. It's a premium, which is in the Japanese tech tree. But this, technically, would be the version of it before it was captured by the Japanese in 1945. The P-51C was actually stationed in uh, China, and then also Indochina, and eventually got captured by the Japanese in 1945, I believe in January 1945. Uh, so this was technically used on both sides. The actual person who flew this thing was first Lieutenant Oliver E. Strawbridge uh, of the 51st Fighter Group, and War Thunder Wiki actually has a really cool little section on the plane itself and its history, so make sure to check that out. But this would just be a complete copy-paste of a premium that we already have in the game in a different tech tree. It would probably also not get access to ordnance in the form of bombs, but since it was technically fighting pseudo on the Allied side, maybe it will, unlike its Japanese counterpart. The next vehicle is the PGH-1, which is the USS Flagstaff. It's a hydrofoil patrol gunboat, which is pretty fun. We're going to read an excerpt uh, from a suggestion post made by R-N-M-I-N-B-I-Y, found by Bob, about the vehicle. In 1965, the US Navy sent specifications for a hydrofoil patrol boat to seven companies. Only two responded, Grumman and Boeing, who were already designing hydrofoils. Rather than choose a design, the Navy decided to order both in 1966 and test them together. The Grumman design became USS Flagstaff and the Boeing design USS Tukumkari. The two vessels differed mainly in their foil configuration. Flagstaff had a conventional design where the front foil supported the majority of the weight and the Tukumkari had the opposite. The Flagstaff was completed in 1968. It and Tukumkari were deployed to Vietnam in 1969 and participated in the coastal patrols of Operation Market Time rotating between each other every five days. The next year, both hydrofoils were recalled because of high maintenance costs and used for other duties. The Tukumkari went on a trip to Europe as a demonstrator and the flagstaff used as a test ship. It spent a year being refitted with a 152mm gun launcher. A modified Sheridan turret with a bubble canopy to save weight was installed and in 1971, firing trials were held. Tests were successful, with 38 shots fired in total, 20 of them while foil-borne, showcasing that small hydrofoils could mount heavy weaponry. In 1974, Flagstaff was transferred, disarmed, to the Coast Guard, as they were interested in high-speed craft, but due to the high maintenance cost, was eventually returned to the Navy. The ship was then sold off in 1978. So the vehicle could technically get access to the 152mm you find on the Sheridan, which would be pretty fun. When its foils were down as well, it could go 94.5 km an hour. So this would be a very speedy boy. The last one is a Tiger II, but this one is one that's been leaked in the past. It's the Swedish Tiger II. Now this one is an earlier Tiger II, much more similar to the Tiger II P than the H, basically having the P turret. It was one that Sweden purchased after the war to do a bunch of evaluation tests with and ended up driving it around and also shooting at it uh, because they were going into their next stage of their military. There's actually a ton of interesting information about Sweden around this time. I'll leave a link to a website which actually goes through the Tiger II in Swedish hands. And it's just really fascinating um, because there's just so many like little intricate stories about it. And a lot of Swedish military history is actually really well documented, uh, which is why it's really really fantastic to kind of uh, go through. They did a bunch of mobility tests with this thing, and as I said, they shot at it with a bunch of stuff, and it was technically in Swedish hands. It was never 
active in their military, uh, but there are some pretty interesting uh, stories itself. Uh, for example, uh, when they actually uh, moved it around, um, they realized uh, that there was a bunch of kind of problems with it um, <laughs> because of, you know, what happened uh, to it during the war, which was quite fun. So, for example, the tank underwent a number of different terrain driving tests in Skvovd or Skovd in 1948. At a hard turn in loose sand on the field outside the workshop, the swing arm of the one end wheel broke. After the broken swing arm was welded together, the staff were forced to be more careful than before during the continued trial. And also, since the tank could not be tested to the same extent as before, a decision was made to transport it to PCK in Carlsborg, today the FMV test site. The transport had originally been planned for between the 24th and 29th of September 1948, but the resulting mishap with the swing arm postponed the transport until further notice. Before the test, there was a discussion on the 11th of November whether the cannon should be removed or if it should be left. What was stated was that the opportunities existed uh, in the future to be able to acquire the 8.8cm ammunition so that shooting tests could be carried out with the gun. I don't think they actually ever got uh, the ammunition itself. But basically, since the tank weighed 69 metric tons, it was not possible to cross the canal bridge in Carlsberg. But instead, they had to go by train to Finnerodia. Otherwise, it would have been possible to take the train to Carlsberg and only tow the tank a few kilometers. But now it was instead um, Finnerodia. Uh, from there, it was dragged with the control out of function so basically in neutral, uh, by a salvage truck type M26 Dragon Wagon and an M4A4 Sherman, approximately 60 kilometers along a road. Other vehicles that participated were a terrain truck, M46, towing truck, uh, which was 10 metric tons, a fuel car, 5 metric tons, two passenger cars and four motorcycles. The transport of the King Tiger now became to be carried out between the 10th and the 15th of November. So imagine using all of these vehicles to just pull along this Tiger II to get it to its testing evaluation area, which is just fantastic. The other thing as well that happened, at the Proving Grounds north of Carlsberg, the King Tiger underwent extensive firing tests from 1948 to 51. This is when they sh shot at it, so with a wide array of weaponry. Among those were subcaliber munitions for the PVKVM-43 and the munitions that were intended for the Carl Gustav M48 handheld anti-tank cannon. So they ended up just basically they used it for mobility tests, engine tests, transmission tests, and also tests to work out what guns they wanted to use on their vehicles going forward. So stuff like this Tiger II eventually uh, helped with the research into stuff like the PVKV-2, 3, and 4, which is pretty cool. But also, at the same time, it's going to cause a bit of controversy because it's another one of these Swedish vehicles which never was actually in military service. Very similar to the Mi-24, for example, and also the T-80, where they were used in the 90s for trials to see if Sweden wanted them, but ended up not having them and not wanting them. So moving on. Same with the AHS, also the attack helicopter system, which is the Apache. Now... We've already crossed the Rubicon when it comes to those ideas, but for me, I don't want this thing to be a battle pass vehicle. I think it should be a standard tech tree vehicle, and the reason for that is pretty simple. And it's the fact that there isn't a heavy tank in the Swedish tech tree. So if you only play Sweden and you have dailies to do, you know, uh, different, um, you know, heavy tank uh, destructions with, you can't play Sweden because you just don't have a heavy, heavy tank that you can rely upon. And the fact that the only heavy tank in this Swedish tree is going to be a premium battle pass one just rubs me the wrong way. Just like how for Italy, the only premium uh, tank that exists is the Hungarian Tiger, the Tigris. Everything else is not a heavy tank in the tech tree and it just once again rubs me the wrong way. So, is it cool that it's being added? Yeah, it is quite nice to see. Uh, even though, you know, it's uh, kind of surroundings is a little bit odd. But the main problem is the fact it's not going to be in the damn standard tech tree. It sucked at the end of the day. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, 
Gus, Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Alan Hacker, Ozzy Panzer, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Cam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.